Hello friends, welcome to our homestead. My name is Cherie and today is April 22nd, 2018. It's Sunday on the homestead and I thought I'd show you around a little bit. So friends, if you're listening on podcast and you'd like to see our slideshow today, please visit us on YouTube and I'll put the link below so that you can click right on to it and follow us with the slideshow that you're going to see. So this is a shot from the side garden and this week even though I am still really sick and Ron is still feeling pretty bad himself, we've managed to get some things done and so we've really actually made some progress. I'm kind of surprised. So with the help of Joey and the help of Ron, thanks so much, we are actually moving forward. I wanted to share with you a little bit, being stuck inside so much this week, I've been able to look out of the windows and we've had some beautiful, gorgeous, sunny days. And as you can see, we have lots of flowers blooming all over the garden. It's just been amazing and drawing lots of pollinators. So we are seeing honeybees of all different kinds. I didn't even realize there were all different kinds, but there are, and they're in our garden. We've got butterflies and big, beautiful moths. We've seen uh, dragonflies and all sorts of beautiful pollinators lighting on the different plants and filling up their legs with pollen and moving back and forth. It's just been beautiful. And even though my garden is such a mess right now and needs so much attention with weeding and cleaning up, we did get a little bit of that done this week, but there's so much more to be done. So as I'm showing you these pictures, I ask apologies right up front for how messy it is. But the interesting thing is, because we didn't actually pull all of those weeds, the weeds are blooming. And what they're doing is bringing in more pollinators. So the, the, all those insects are just loving all these blooming weeds. And it's just been really successful for helping to get the garden just populated with different types of flowering plants. Now, what you're seeing right here is, I've actually been planting in the tree stumps. You might have seen our update from last week. And these are some squash plants that I have there, but also you'll notice that I've got uh, purple irises growing and in the front some sort of oriental beautiful blooming flower I don't even know the name of. And we've got, um, I can't remember the name of it, you're thinking with me and you know what it is, but we've got yellow flowers blooming just every color everywhere. And we have these really interesting clumps of just these wild sort of um, irises that you're looking at now. <coughs> Excuse me. And these, we couldn't get weeds to grow in this area. This used to be nothing but sand. And you see those beautiful bricks in the pathways? We gleaned those from a tower that was used as a scouting tower during World War II down in Waveland. And when it came down in um, in uh, Hurricane Katrina, we took those bricks and the owner told us that prior to that, that was actually the Gulfport Railroad Station. So we gleaned those and made our paths out of them. And then in the center between the paths, as you can see, we have all kinds of herbs and flowering plants. We have evergreens, we've got small trees, we've got vegetable gardens. And now in the background, you can actually see a trellis. When we were clearing out some of the underbrush, um, on the slope where we put the, uh, where we, you know, got the ferns last week, Joey actually pulled out some lighter pine for me and we built a little tree. He had, I had him build me a little trellis right there in our walkway in the path coming into our garden. And so we've just been doing all sorts of things. I did have Joey get out there and use the weed eater and kind of clean up the paths a little bit so we could get around. But Ron and I are actually starting to just plant well just plop compost in different areas because we're having so much success with this process of composting what's on our land using sticks and leaves and chicken manure green uh leaves and brown leaves and crushed leaves and mowed over leaves and just all kinds of things and it is doing so well that we're just starting to plop it into the gardens and and put leaves on top and just start creating mounds of compost in different places now right here you can see all the weeds that are blooming and beyond that you can see um what we'll, we'll soon take a look at which is our hay bale garden and how it's doing this week but you can see we're starting to clean up some of the paths <coughs> excuse me and 
our porch is a bit messy right now because we are doing many projects up there, including painting the porch. But down these paths to the left there in the pot, you'll actually see another squash growing, tomatoes on the left, and beyond that, we actually have eggplant growing right in, right in the midst of all the plants. So we have lots of wonderful things going on. And it's really been interesting because in this area, in this whole garden, we used to have these very big, beautiful water oaks. Well, if you know anything about water oaks, they are just... I didn't know this, but really horrible for a garden and close to a house because they rot from the inside and they were creating so much shade. They were dripping all of this yuck from their leaves and everything. And we had black mold everywhere. The black mold was in our house. It was all over our porch. So we had to cut it away about three years ago, three and a half years ago. And in doing so, it really changed this whole area. It's now this whole ecosystem. It is amazing but we are only using that natural composting material and planting plants that people have given us or little things we've bought, such as the herb you're looking at right now, which is um, pineapple sage. This gets so big that it towers over my head and it blooms the most beautiful red flowers and it is a butterfly's paradise. When it's in bloom and it's in bloom all summer long, the butterflies just go crazy. And yes, we do cut it back and use this spice as well as the turmeric you're about to see. But we have lots of herbs growing throughout the garden that we use for teas and for um, herbs that we cook with. I've mentioned this before, but I grow every herb that we cook with. I don't buy herbs anymore. If I buy an herb, it's I'm buying a plant. But I do not buy herbs for cooking. And now I'm starting to plant herbs for medicinal use, which this past week, um, about a week ago, Ron and Joey actually went and got me a tincture from an herb store, and um, it did wonders. And it was just made from all kinds of herbs that were just amazing. And so I want to learn how to do this myself to help heal my family, as I think this tincture actually maybe either kept me or is moving me away from pneumonia. So it was really a big deal. And now you're just seeing some watermelon we planted. We have these mounds, you're seeing one in front and one in the back, that we had potatoes planted in. And we haven't planted in them in a couple of years, so we needed a place to put down our watermelon plants. So Ron is using that space. It's hard to see, but it's actually a mound that stands about two feet tall. And again, we're always using leaves and things that we mulch and continually adding to these growing spaces. So in one year, we might have some success. And then in consecutive years after that, it's amazing how it's, it's just getting more and more fertile. And you're seeing the garden with everything blooming so beautifully. That's because we just keep doing it. Okay, so back to the trellis that Joey built for me out of the lighter pine. We actually used a couple of pieces. And as you can see, it's very, uh, I don't even know how to say it, but it's not symmetric. And so we love things that look natural um, and just different. And I thought, of course, birds could perch on those um, stems that are sticking out. And we just thought it'd be a nice place to be. So we planted climbing green beans at the bottom. We have these fantastic heirloom beans and we had been planting in the same location and of course it's getting depleted and we're getting some diseases. So we decided this year we would move those plants around as good uh, gardeners do and so we're moving them all over the yard and we decided to do just some really interesting things by integrating our food source that we're growing inside of our flowering gardens and it's doing really well. So down here, we have some of those bean seeds, and i um, really looking forward to seeing that happen. I'm really excited about that. This, to me, has just become so much fun. It's just a constant process of being creative with the space that you have. And, of course, I'm now a big fan of Urban, homes, uh, urban Homestead, which, if you haven't ever listened to it, you really should. And, of course, they plant in every space available. Now, what you're looking at is what used to be the edge of my driveway, and delivery people used to be able to drive right up to that box, open it up, and put deliveries in it. But because we moved the uh, hay bale garden out in front of it to help our erosion issues, I asked Joey this week if he could help me. We couldn't even get the box open anymore because it was so much rain 
the wood had swollen it shut. So he repaired that box for me, and what I have done is I've actually turned it into my toolbox. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I just open the door, and I've got my tools inside of there. So when I go out to garden, I don't have to go all the way back to my little shed slash greenhouse on the back porch, which we are about to move. I can just open up my delivery box, get my tools, and get to work. So I'm loving this, loving this, loving this. So anyway, that is um, a real plus for us with that. And then I've had Joey do just different little things like that trellis that you saw this week. And even though he's really busy with school, I'm giving him little half hour projects that he gets out and he does. It gets him out in the sunshine and fresh air, but it's also using his skills and then of course helping me. So now you can see as you're looking down the driveway, You'll see on either side, you'll see the bales look like they have some black stuff on top. Well, what we are doing, we've decided to go ahead and take the risk, and we're going to start planting in these bales, even though we feel like they are not really fully conditioned yet. And so <clears throat> what we've decided to do is to cut out some holes in them, put some of that composted material, and then plant right in it and then we're putting the hay across back on the top of that composted material now yes we could possibly draw ants with this which right that bale right in front of you now that you might be looking at you can see that i have diatomaceous earth on top because we found that several bales this week were full of ants so we dealt with it with the diatomaceous earth and also by spraying the leaves in the top of the bales with a mixture of one tablespoon garlic to one tablespoon cayenne pepper boiled in water. I let it steep and then I, I uh, scooped off the water, I mean that, that cayenne garlic water, and I put it in a spray bottle. I sprayed the leaves of the plants and the bales and we no longer have ants. And it took about a day and the ants were gone. Now this bale took like two days. For some reason so i put some more diatomaceous earth on it and it dealt with the problem so we were really thrilled about that because we wanted to see if we could find some sort of natural way to deal with that ant problem because we figure if we had it once we're probably going to have it again so even though these bales are not fully conditioned we decided to go ahead and start planting in them because we just want to experiment we want to see what we can do with what we have and as you know that is the theme of our homestead channel <clears throat> both in our podcast and our YouTube channel is that we want to see what we can use with what we already have although we did buy those bales but sometimes we get them free from friends and I'll tell you about something else in just a minute we learned that's very exciting we learned from the hay bale gardening book is uh, is that you can actually take material that you have composted that's still breaking down like sticks and leaves and stuff and you can make your own bales and we are absolutely intending on doing that and when we do we will show you that process we are really excited about it now Ron did get into the garden this week and he did put up the wire on the um, on the bales where you see the squash and we did plant you can see the holes in the bales right there going down the watershed we did plant bean seeds in the bales with the squash and we just because those bales are very uh, broken down already they're very loose we just literally stuck the bean seeds just straight down into the bales without putting any soil no composting material whatsoever so that's another experiment we'll see what happens but Ron did get the wire up between the two squash uh, squash bales and we're gonna see how that goes now, if you're looking at the video, you can see now that um, what we have done is uh, we scooped out a little bit of the hay and put the composted material right on top as we're learning from <clears throat> some of the things we're learning from the man who developed this process with the hay bale gardening. And I have two different uh, squash seeds planted in this one. So they're literally just barely under the soil there under that composted material you can see the sticks and leaves on top because this is straight out of our compost pile and so we're going to see what happens with that it's not very deep at all it's probably about an inch then here you'll see where i transplanted some of the squash from one of my um 
experiments with planting directly into the rotting tree stump. And what I did is I just took a small hole out of the bale, put some of the composting material, put the squash plant in, and put the, the, um, the hay back around it. Now, it took about, I want to say, almost a week of no rain before the bales dried out. And so they were fully dry, pretty much fully dry when I had to water them. But we had a really big rain last night, so I probably won't have to water for another week. Now this is a close up of how I, uh, how Ron cut the holes out for me. And so they haven't been filled yet, but tomorrow I'm going to be filling those holes and putting in seed. And I'm going to directly sow into these bales. And we're gonna see how that turns out. Now he just piled the remaining hay down the center of the two holes there. And what I'm going to do is once the seed pops the ground and we start having some leaves, we'll put that hay around the um, plants because we're finding that it's working really well to keep the moisture inside the bales is to keep the, the soil covered. Now here you see where the squash is really growing. And this was taken several days ago, but since that rain last night, I was outside today and the squash now is about three to four inches long, about an inch around. And if it keeps going this way, I would think in about a week or so, I'll be starting to pick squash. So I'm really excited about that. And I want to tell you that those ants were attacking my squash flowers. And so when I saw that, I immediately, you'll notice there's white dust there. That's the diatomaceous earth that I sprinkled on and some got on the leaves and the flowers. But I was really thrilled to see that within less than 12 hours, I didn't see any more ants. So it was really, it was a very fast working process. I was just really thrilled with that. And again, you can see how, um, how well these plants are developing. Now, remember in the hay, I don't know if you know this or not, but in the hay bale gardening method, you don't put anything in these bales. You condition them right up front by using some sort of fertilizer. And what we used was chicken manure, but you don't do anything else. That's it. And so what you have here is you're actually growing directly in the bales. So the bales are feeding those plants. And then of course, as I had mentioned, every two to four weeks, right now I was doing every two weeks, now I'm going every four weeks, I am feeding those plants with um, fish emulsion. So I use a cap full of fish emulsion that I have as a liquid in a bottle. I put it into my watering can, which is about a gallon. I fill it with water, agitate the water, and then I pour it on to the top of the bale. I try, of course, not to hit the plant. And you'll also notice that I have flowers growing now. So I'm just, I just tried it. I just stuck it in the side to see what would happen. I just put it in with a barely little bit of composted material. Okay, here's the exciting part. Ron actually did begin to build our, um, our, our, rain barrel system this week. So what you see him doing here is he's measuring the hole. He's measured up four inches. <coughs> Excuse me. And what he's going to do is to drill out a hole. Now he's not here with me right now, but I do think it's a it's an inch and a half to a two inch hole he drills out. So you're going to see in just a moment where he drills out that hole. Now this is from the bottom because the point is is you want the water to be um, pulled off of the bottom because you always want to be trying to empty that barrel for, you know to keep to keep that water moving so here he is he has he had to buy a special drill bit uh, that drill bit right there is one that we bought from the same store and we got our plumbing supplies at a hardware store that is probably the oldest hardware store in our area and um, for those of you who are in this area and you might want to check it out, we went to Hubbard's Hardware Store down in Waveland and we purchased everything there. We found all of the parts to do this at that store. Ron did have to go out today and actually buy the actual faucets and he bought those from a different hardware store, but we could have gotten it there as well. So now you see his hole and he cleaned it out really well. Um, before he did this, he actually cleaned out the inside and the outside of the barrels. And we did make sure that these are food grade barrels. So we know that we have, you know, 55 gallon drums that are going to be okay 
with being out in the sun baking on that plastic and hopefully you know the plastic will not be transferred into the water as we do this you know as we send that to our plants and then you will see that Ron started putting on the fittings now we went to Lowe's and we could not find these fittings at Lowe's at all which you would think is really weird because you would think you should be able to find this there <clears throat> but what it is it's a special connection that um, actually Ron's just coming in the house and so I'm gonna have him tell you really quickly what that is Okay, so Ron has just come in from doing his best to get as much of the sweet potato garden prepared for me today as you saw in the pictures but he's going to tell you a little bit about what's going on in these photos okay well that particular picture is from the inside of the rain barrel uh, if, I don't know how what Sheree actually mentioned to you already uh, we purchased a bulkhead connector that is what that is that you're seeing in the picture from the outside of course of the rain barrel now I drilled a one and a half inch hole one inch yeah one and a half inch hole with a hole saw and uh, measured it four inches from the bottom up to the center of the hole the lid we were able to take the lid off what happened uh, I was able to reach in with the connector from the inside push it through and then it was just a simple washer and then a nut now of course the nuts on these particular connectors are reverse thread so you know you have to think a little backwards on this well there's the finished connector in place and then pretty much uh, what I'm going to put attached to that <coughs> excuse me is a, a three-quarter inch faucet or hose bib whatever however you want to call it and then that will just give me a basic on off valve in order to be able to, to shut my water lines down if I want to you know for whatever reason and then I believe Sheree has intentions of taking a splitter to put on the end of that faucet and uh, divide the hoses amongst our gardens which you'll get to see okay Ron this is um, I'm showing a picture here of how you lifted up the barrels on cement blocks right and so it's just a method is what we have I really think my boxes actually are about that height so I'm actually gonna have to double put another set of uh, cinder blocks on top of that just to give me uh, we're gonna we're gonna experiment with gravity fed drip you know hose uh, water dripping in the garden I know I'm not saying that correctly Drip hoses right and so uh, I have kind of done some research I know Sheree has too looking at other there's the hose bib uh, as you can see it's a three-quarter inch fitting uh, I put some pipe tape on it and hand tightened it basically uh, anyway so uh, we're gonna try to just see gravity fed if that will work uh, before we even make any attempt after that we're we're in the exper experimental stage right at the moment so and this isn't water that we're going to be using inside the house this is just water that's inside our raised bed garden so <clears throat> what Ron did then is he went ahead and he we talked about how we would deal with the top of the barrel because this barrel actually has a removable removable lid with a clamp ring and so we chose this we could have had either way we could have had a solid lid but we wanted this because we wanted to do something like what you're seeing we're thinking about possibly using that dark fabric you put over plants to keep roots from growing okay so so what I did was that's just that screen mesh for screening in a porch or or whatever and it's a tight mesh it's a, it's a tight mesh yes correct so the mosquitoes shouldn't get in which I, I know and, and I understand is its primary purpose so you don't get the mosquitoes and the mosquito larvas in the water so right now I, I was listening to a, a YouTube video and uh, on another channel and I just wanted to say that his suggestion was rather than do nothing do something so we know we need to get you know more water involved in it but right now it's just open to the rain until we can get to our next step and so. we had a big rain last night and we have about an inch in the bottom yeah, of the barrel right, right. it's so it's there. <clears throat> yeah it's in place it's our starting point so. thanks Ron thanks yes. for the update 
Okay, so one of the last few things that we have, I thought I had the sweet potato garden earlier, picture earlier, but I didn't. But I did want to say, because I've been so sick this week and in the house, I was drinking some hot tea and my tea wasn't staying hot in my teapot. So I went online and I looked for some ideas and I came up with this tea cozy idea. So I actually crocheted a tea cozy and made it for myself and it worked out great. So with all that time I was sitting inside, um, <coughs> ladies, if you're wondering how I did it, that's actually doubled. I crocheted a long piece of fabric, doubled it, and then I put some buttons on it that on either side. I have a string that pulls through and a string that tightens around the neck. And I was really amazed. I was so tickled because it worked. I actually had to go off with Joey and we had to run an hour uh, about it. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, an errand for about an hour and a half this week. And when I got back, the tea was still hot and I was just giddy. I was so excited. You know, when you're, when you're working with things and you're trying to do the best you can with what you have, whenever you have a success like this, it's just so exciting. Every day waking up and looking out in the garden and seeing all these pollinators flitting around these beautiful masses of flowers and looking at things growing it's just been really exciting to me so i've been drinking tea out of this pot throughout the week with um with my tea cozy and hot tea and it's just tickled me and made me so happy and then of course it's cute to look at so for the ladies i'm sure you'd appreciate this so okay <coughs> excuse me i'm sorry for coughing but i'm still trying to get well and it's hard to talk for a long time without a cough but last but not least, Ron just came inside because just a few minutes ago, he was doing this. So if you're watching the video, or if you're not, I'll just tell you that we have a small experimental um, sweet potato patch. And in this patch, Ron has been, we tried a lot of things. Years ago, we put wood chips all over it, and that was a disaster. We tried doing the Back to Eden garden never again. That was awful. So what you're looking at is the decomposed wood chips in the garden with weeds growing up. And that's actually, what is that, Ron? Con uh, the grass, the white, you know, the white grass heads. Kogan grass, that horrible grass that nobody wants. <laughs> um, so he is actually pulling up Kogan grass and we're going to see how it does. So that's our update for the week i hope you've enjoyed it <laughs> i've been rushing through we've had so many things going on it's amazing that we've gotten this much done even though ron is still not well and he's exhausted from it all and i've just been sick myself but we thank you for tuning in and we hope that you'll join us again we'd love to hear your comments and again please visit us at www.bayoutown.com you can also visit us on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash Bayoutown. And of course on YouTube at Bayoutown Productions. And I guess that's about it. But we enjoyed being with you. And until next week, so long my friends. See you next time.